what the differences are, what the important things are. Clinical success is what we're looking for. Clinical success is increased by surface bacteria that are eliminated. If the surface bacteria continue to be present, then that's going to decrease our clinical success. So whenever we have a problem like this, the first thing that we want to do is eliminate surface bacteria, both on the surface of the tooth and inside the preparation. Subsurface bacteria must be eliminated. Do all the bacteria stay on the surface, or do some of them go in underneath? Underneath the surface. Half a millimeter, one millimeter, what's the depth? And how far do they go in? Where do they go in? Well, we know that the dentinal tubules are open, we know that the enamel lattices are open. That's where they go in. How do we get them out? Acid etching may get some of them out, but can we be sure? And to what depth? If we have subsurface bacteria uh, present in our uh, cavity preparations and we restore over them, we're going to have breakdown and clinical lack of success, not clinical success. Soft tissue bacteria. Soft tissue are a problem because if we leave a totally healthy situation like this and the soft tissues have bacteria present, and we cannot eliminate it, the patient cannot eliminate it, eventually the tooth is going to look like this again. And what's going to happen? You're going to have decay. Okay. You're going to have the same problems that you had before. So clinical success is really uh, dependent on our ability to control the bacterial presence. If we can, it'll work. If we can't, it will not, because the mouth is not a clean environment. Here's a preparation. Uh, I don't want to go to the step-by-step uh, -step procedures. We'll do this on Saturday. But here's a cavity. And in this cavity, first thing we do, of course, is we take an electronic shade match to see what the color is going to be. Much better than using our own eyes. Much more accurate. Uh, trust me. I know how to take shades, but the machine is better than I am. Much better. And uh, over here, we can use microabrasion to eliminate the decay that's in this tube. Or, in this case, uh, an SS white thing, white, exome cutting burst. Now, what does that leave us with? It leaves us with this preparation. And at this point, we simply acid edge and do our restorations. The reason I just say acid edge and composite, because I have not done an amalgam in 20 years. I will never do one in my practice again, so I don't even speak about it. But, what are we sealing in here? This looks clean. This looks healthy. Is it? It's not yellow. It doesn't have holes in it. But does it have bacteria in it? You tell me. Of course it does. So what are we going to do? Are we just going to pretend there are no bacteria there and restore over it? Or are we going to do something to that surface to eliminate the bacteria and give us a better opportunity for clinical success? I like the idea of doing something about it. So what can we do? Well, we can use the ozone, the eurozone, uh, tell you why we aren't using that anymore, and uh, we can use uh, the ozonics and simply apply the ozonics locally to create ozone, uh, which will kill the bacteria very effectively in the local area. You might uh, wonder why am I not using this? Well, a couple of very good reasons. Number one, uh, this was an excellent unit. Hemozone is an established technology, but uh, it has complex machinery and uh, seals required. And uh, Dr. Goldstep is going to tell you more about this in a few minutes. Uh, but this product, the also, in our area is no longer supported. In Canada, I cannot get spare parts for it. They've stopped production of the units, as far as the company tells me, and they don't have spare parts. So I'm sitting with a Hemozone unit. I can't get parts, I can't get caps, I can't get anything for it. That's a problem. I can't use it. And I've got nobody who can sell me the stuff. I'm willing to pay good money for it. Nobody's there. So I'm looking for a product that is supported, that uh, is expanding, that is growing, that there are new applications for, new uh, opportunities for, not something which constrains me into a machine that's sitting there, making me angry every time I look at it. Old and new infection, disinfection technologies, 10 years old and much younger than that, continuing to develop uh, as opposed to stagnating. That's why I'm excited about the ozone. I've been excited about ozone for a decade, but now I'm excited about the ozonics 
address, which we've been using since about January. Now, we continue over here. This is very simple. After we apply the ozone to the surface, kill the bacteria to a depth of anywhere from one to two and a half millimeters, we now will apply our uh, bonding agent, which happens to be the Shofu uh, Beauty Bond. Uh, just apply it, air dry it, and uh, light cures when it's very uh, thin. Uh, five microns uh, thick, apply our Beauty uh, Fill 2, which is Gyromer product, uh, to the restoration, and uh, then light cure that in layers. When we get to the occlusal surface, we no longer uh, finish that off and then use our drill to polish it. It takes too much time. I use this instrument, uh, which is from the U3D. It's called a duck head, uh, the head of a duck. Why? Because it looks like a duck. It has an official number. I can never tell you the number because I don't remember. It simply looks like a duck head. It is a duck head. So uh, I remove the excess material with one sweep on the lingual, uh, one sweep, and you can see the excess material coming off of here, one sweep on the buckle, and all the excess is gone. And uh, why does it uh, create the anatomy so effectively? Because it's sort of a reflection, a negative, of the cusp ridge anatomy. Take a look at the cusp ridge shape and take a look at the instrument shape. So using the natural anatomy, I simply recreate the cusp ridge anatomy of the tooth. Uh, very simple, eliminates most of my polishing. What does that mean? Polishing takes me five to ten minutes a tooth with conventional procedures. If I'm uh, grossing, let's say, $100 an hour, that ten minutes is going to cost me one-sixth, $15. If I'm grossing $200 an hour, $30. If I'm grossing $300, $45 finish to polish a restoration. Very expensive. You never thought about it like that, did you? But now, for the rest of your career, you're going to think about everything like that. So if I could reduce your polishing time from 10 minutes to one minute, do you just make some uh, advantageous change for your practice? Of course. So, the duck head. Uh, this is a u instrument. After you've done that, now, one pass, two pass. That's all you've done. You take the other side of the duck head and create your groove anatomy. One pass through the central developmental groove, and one pass each on the buckle and uh, the ridge uh, grooves. You can see the adaptation, how this creates it. It's not too steep a curve, and it's not too pointy a groove, so food does not get stuck. And uh, then you simply do your buckle lingual grooves. The whole procedure is five seconds the first time you do it. After that, it will be faster. It's a good idea to lubricate uh, the duck head with a bonding agent. If you do it with alcohol, you'll get stains afterwards. So alcohol is probably not a good idea. And you just do this, you can see the uh, anatomy that it leads. You're just creating a natural normal anatomy. Once that's done, uh, you light cure it. And usually there's little or no polishing to do over here. And that's the general idea. So now, I rarely have to polish my restoration more than uh, 30 seconds or a minute, and very often, not at all, because I've used the existing anatomy of the tooth to create the anatomy of my restoration. Suppose that. Nothing very, you know, fancy about that. I've just saved myself time by thinking ahead rather than thinking uh, later. Instead of building up and cutting down, create the natural anatomy right away. We used to, with amalgam, we'd scrape away the extra because the